Thank you for the kind introduction and uh, welcome to day two. First session is always difficult to start, but I think we should somewhere start it. All of us write prescriptions every day? So how many of us write exercise as a prescription? So we can provide some inputs. I'll, we'll spare some five minutes or two, three minutes at least. I'm going, yeah. So we'll see how we should differ and how we should emphasize that it is a part of a prescription because once we write the medications, the emphasis on lifestyle goes off. Diet and exercise, people I always avoid prescribing in the first visit unless of course it is compelling indication to prescribe the medications because once you write it, our emphasis on the diet and exercise goes off so quite very badly. And this is the data from recent uh, times of India. So to show how physically inactive we Indians are and also how we glorify our overworking nature. Uh, pointer please, if there is a pointer. So lifestyle and wellness, when you look at it, it's not just about diet and exercise. Now technology also has come into our lifestyle as a big way and where environment we live itself becomes very, very important. Many times we have seen that staying in a metro city itself is a big stress something like Bangalore or maybe even Ahmedabad to commute and to reach your place itself is a big stress there. So lifestyle is a prescription. I think uh, the orator also was showing this slide. I think uh, everyone wants easy solution. That's why we don't want to do diet and exercise. I don't know how many of us had uh, some sort of exercise today. I managed some, some in spite of the last night's gala event. So if we don't prescribe exercise, it will be like this prescription only, antibiotic and painkiller. So we should specify what exercise you're going to do. Before that, what are the prerequisites is what we need to look at it. So exercise, uh, physical activity is not just about exercise, but also activities of daily living. Why we are emphasizing on this point is, if we just do a 45 minutes or one hour gym, and then the rest of the 23 hours, we don't do much, we don't move much, then the whole, uh, the whole aspect of exercise benefit doesn't come. So sometimes we see a gym goers, after that we, they'll be lying loath always in the bed. That, that is not going to help us is what we need to look. And sitting is the new smoking. Usually before I start the session, I always ask people to get up. Or if you can't get up, because just we started so we can still be seated. Or at least I always tell keep doing the soleus push-ups. Now we have a lot of data on that, that it will be very useful. And I'll show my own experience with one of my patients who is my friend also. So exercise utility, there's always a debate, when do you exercise, morning, afternoon, night, and whatever. So of course, whatever suits you is the best time to do it. If I am a morning person and evening, we are busy by the time we finish practice, I think we should exercise in whatever time we get. But looking specifically to the diabetes aspects, postprandial, Post lunch, a brief walk itself is doing wonders uh, for the exercise and always even ask our patients to do a walk on their terrace or somewhere in the garden or something just after the exercise, after the food. Higher intensity exercise is not more effective. Again, a controversial thing, but even though the exercise dose response is there, nowadays the latest data says that if someone exercises more, they can also have uh, greater benefits in terms of uh, reduction of uh, postprandial hyperglycemia and so on. So there is a small protocol called sprint interval training, three minutes of intense intermittent exercise per week with a total commitment of 30 minutes. WHO and uh, even RSSDI, we say 150 minutes a week. If someone does short bursts of intense exercise lasting only 30 minutes throughout the week is as effective. So some movement is better than no movement more movement, the better it is. And lot of emphasis on resistant training now. We all know muscle building is important. IGT can be addressed much more than IFG because by building the muscles. So postprandial hyperglycemia resistance training is very, very important. So is there any uh, evidence? Yes, there is a lot of evidence. You can read about it. Uh, there is always an inverse relation between dysglycemia and higher quartile of physical activity. Higher the activity, the dysglycemia reduces from 16% to 11% print prevalence. And combine both aerobic and resistant exercise, add on meditation, yoga, flexibility. That is the key now. Previously, we used to talk only about the aerobic exercises, which are important like, but then now we know resistant exercises give much more than the aerobic exercises. 
and of course never forget balance especially in the elderly and the yoga and of course lot of uh, positive benefits i'm sure all of you know it is just the numbers from the weight to waist circumference to visceral adiposity to hypertension dyslipidemia every aspect of physical and mental health mental health also gets benefited by doing exercise and how soon does it work exercise improves insulin sensitivity as early as 48 hours but it also lasts for 48 to 96 hours so that's why we say no more than 2 days of break why is it because of this this uh, data and uh, someone who does a fasting state exercises it improves the lipemia postprandial exercises improves the dysglycemia so flexibility exercises especially at the end of aerobic and resistant exercise is very important that's what we call it as stretching to uh, minimize our uh, uh, injuries also balance exercises like standing on one foot walking on toes walking on heels walking backwards and walking sideways i think earlier the we start doing this it's very very important in an elderly we should be doing these things only under great supervision elderly falls are mainly due to balance or imbalance of course the other uh, mechanical issues come in there but balance is being emphasized off late now so never forget yoga do we have evidence yoga in itself is a very very big topic there is lot of evidence as effective as any other exercise or even more effective my friend in nimans is doing a study one arm yoga one arm exercise and we are eagerly waiting for the results in my conference in disha also we divide the delegates into two arms and we have done a, a study on that and uh, what is the difference between yoga and exercise yoga is not just an exercise when i am i am a runner i am when i am running my mind is wandering everywhere i don't know what i am thinking and some people put so music and run it is dangerous to uh, life actually recently we saw someone running over especially in a cities where people are recklessly some of we disregard people who are on the road we think they are nothing so here the yoga makes you focus all the five senses the mind the buddhi and the atma gets connected you are breathing you are focusing on the breathing chanting a mantra so your mind is not diverted so sometimes with this other exercises what i do depending on my mood and mindset i can become a bit more aggressive or something like that just after the exercise of course the catecholamine release mind wandering and you are in your own world here it brings back to the current state of mind so that's the beauty of yoga always emphasize yoga in your patients and again soleus push up i think the new in thing nowadays a uh, very special muscle soleus we also call it as a peripheral heart uh, it's a type 1 slow twitch fiber consumes glucose from the blood more effectively without fatigue so that is the thing it doesn't fatigue as early as the other groups of muscles that's why you can keep doing on the soleus push ups even when you are sitting i am trying to do now and you can do it it is very very effective way of getting the glycemia down uh in a unique experiment soleus push up was continuously used for 4 hours resulting in 52% less glucose excursion than while they were sitting still so i think this is the exercise which we all can keep doing it and i have a video on that and if there is a youtube link does it really work uh, she is my friend and my patient i had talked to her about it she has seen the youtube video and this is what she said after put 10 minutes of walking and then her glucose used to come down by 50 units otherwise what when with folius push ups and without folius push ups it's her own uh, uh, data and or her own experiment so this is what is very very important even 5 10 minutes post meal if they do also it is very very helpful and this can be done even when we are consulting and so on so i think different exercises and what are the benefits is summed up in this i won't get into the details for the want of time and of course that's what i said what you do the remaining 23 hours even if you exercise for one hour is very very important like even gardening dancing cycling everything will help your uh, your body in a way which is better so always remember variety is the key don't try to stick i was a runner i began as a runner and when i started running i was always in the physiotherapy department because i was getting injured with runs so combine flexibility yoga and uh, strength training meditation that will be more effective than just trying to do only one thing at a time 
So American College of Sports Medicine says this, similar to drug, exercise has to be prescribed in a modality, dose, frequency, with a patient-centric personalized approach. If someone has severe osteoarthritis, we can't keep talking like this. First thing in this prescription is to know their intention, if they are willing to do it. And a lot of concerns come, diet is versus exercise, and more importantly, pre-exercise checkups. Definitely, we need to do it. We all do the checkups yearly ones for our diabetics, specific to the exercise. If someone wants to do a high-intensity exercise or want to do more than the ordinary, definitely more intensive checkups are needed. For example, I had registered for the full marathon, bad family history, I did my CT coronary angio, but it's not needed for everyone, but definitely when it indicated, we should go because we are seeing a lot of deaths, uh, especially when people are doing, overdoing the work. And exercise paradox, there were some initial uh, reports that exercise can have more mortality, but that has been cleared off now. Some, I'll come to that. And never ignore the warning says That's the most important thing. Even in our exercise group, we have a national group of doctors with exercise. And someone recently expired. If you really dig into the history, they would have neglected a chest pain or uh, undue fatigue and things like that. Most often than not, that is the cause. Exercise has not killed by anyone uh, if they have done it in a proper way and in a more structured way. So all these factors are important. Exercises in the long run are beneficial, but we also know exercise when you do intense exercise can cause hyperglycemia also. So each type of exercise, duration, intensity, type, prior metabolic control, blood glucose level at, and how you respond, and what type of medications you are taking, all these things has to be factored when we prescribe an exercise to this patients. So this is, uh, anyway, a chart is everywhere available. Uh, ideal uh, glucose level around 150 to 200 around is good. If it is low, you correct it with glucose or any carbohydrate. Make sure they carry some carbs with them to take it. If they are in doubt whether it is there or not, hypoglycemia, they're getting it or not. And 250 to 300, we should always look at ketone bodies, more than 300, 350. Exercise is contraindicated whether anything is ketone body is positive or not. Avoid always hypoglycemia in diabetes. Always carry some sugar, emphasize it. Go graded, go slow with the diabetic patients. The risk of going hypoglycemia is more. And when you time the exercise, tell them not to do too late. Too late in the evening, if they do, the risk of nocturnal hypoglycemia is very high. So that is one important thing. And again, you should see, you should not inject insulin to the more exercising arm. Abdomen will always be preferred in this context, even otherwise. It's not moving. It's not moving. Okay. And fluid and electrolyte is also very, very important for us to keep a note of. Uh, depending on where you are and how much is the hydration status and the humidity and the heat, you may lose a lot of fluids. So frequent small volumes are to be taken and it, again it has to be individualized. Interrupted sitting is very, very important. That's what I was emphasizing. Sometimes I do crazy stuff. I used to sit on the yoga ball in the clinic just to make sure I, it helps my core and I keep getting up. Uh, more often than just relaxing on the chair, as we all know, sitting is the new smoking. So recommendations, again, WHO, ADA, RSSDI, all of, all of them recommend similarly, 150 minutes of in a week, moderate intensity, half of it if they are doing high intense exercises, two to three sessions of resistance training, yoga, flexibility, you add it, and no more than two days holiday for the exercise should be given. This is the most important thing. Fitness for exercise has to be assessed, high risk versus low risk. Mindset has to be assessed of the patient. He, he may not have any intention to do exercise. When we start talking so much about it, he'll get put off by this. So we should try to st stimulate or instill that interest in them. If there is an intention or not, create intention, activity, and training. And nowadays, it's all about gadgets and apps. Everyone keeps looking how many steps they took and what they eat and so on. Very importantly, and again, basic test has to be done. Uh, special emphasis to treadmill test is also very, very important. So pre-prescription. Is, this is what we need to look at it. You always look at what is the patient. Not everyone are same and try to adjust according to their interest and capacity. So there are specific situations what we need to look at. Pregnancy, very important. Always some used to debate that we should exercise, we should not exercise. Clearance should be given by the gynecologist, I'll tell. Or if there is a low-lying placenta or something, they have told bed rest, you leave them alone. So exercise duration of 30 minutes, at least three to four times per week with aerobic exercise being the most recommended in pregnancy. 
weight training people definitely not want to do it and yoga and meditation will be an additional thing elderly reduce sedentary time ask them to keep moving some simple soleus push ups could be very very useful and try and do the resistance exercise again it is very difficult if they don't do the technique their muscles are very flabby so without weights also you can do the resistance exercise just by holding it passive stretch i didn't include that because of the want of time and balance is what we need to emphasize on to prevent falls so again retinopathy we all know rigorous exercise are contraindicated especially post laser photocoagulation nephropathy we all know exercise can cause transient physiological cause of proteinuria and peripheral neuropathy we should be very very careful look at the foot always examine the foot like the face and always have a shoe buy a shoe in the afternoon have one size bigger than what it should be and uh, good quality socks all of these things has to be specially emphasized on that so digital health everything is digitalized even from the water bottle to how much we run and this thing and uh, motivational inertia some people get started and they just get lost on it so usually when i do a run or walk i do it around my house which is a clinic also so a lot of people get see us and get uh, impressed there, there is one person who he is my patient who is off all the diabetic medications and the hypertensive medication and he has become a big marathon runner uh, he he owes it to me but i owe it to him for inspiring us so always have groups and uh, have a guru he is my guru for running and other things so it's always good to have some people around and lot of whatsapp groups are there we have especially sunday already I mean, 100 messages have come in that group so injuries are very very important to be addressed because if you don't address this then it will form a negative cycle on people do not neglect early signs because people say mind over body and keep doing something and get into trouble more than uh, this thing so these are the important thing patient assessment prior health issues identify patient capacity what they can do and then give a prescription something like this the fit principle can still be followed and look at their mindset not active no intention to intention to some activity which is not enough so you work on them based on that and also other things are very very important to address apart from the exercise alone so i'm sporting grades with type 1 diabetes i think we all know wasim akram for sure is a type 1 diabetic so giving these examples would help them get more rejuvenated and look towards exercise as a principal form of uh, therapy so to friends to conclude exercise and sports are important component of health and well being we should know as we prescribe medications we should prescribe the exercise in a form and a manner which is applicable uh, being a role model is the best way to do it if we do not look fit and healthy it is very very poor on the patients to take it so i always tell this the five commandments of healthy lifestyle as a prescription always love yourself keep one hour a day for your own self nutrition is very very important what we eat when we eat how much and how we eat like for example i always give this ragi is good or the millets we are from a place where ragi is seen but if you take it as a ragi ball actually glycemic excursions are much much higher than the same ragi in the roti form fitness is not just about exercise one hour it should be mobility yoga flexibility last slide and be mindful is very very important sleep stress screen reality family and friends and transform we all get motivated but we need to have some self discipline and sustain it as a habit thank you very much